Alright, there we go. You guys want to watch this video of this gentleman who just did a YouTube video on me. Alright, first before you guys go, make sure you guys subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Our jobs get 100,000. All of your greatest content, me, Max Ray, playing games, me playing Lyric. You know, I used to be cool on Twitch. All those big time streamers used to want to play with me. But a lot of stuff. Check it out. Okay, so you guys want to watch me, uh, the man who was erased by UFC? How about I get it? You guys want me to watch this? So I'll watch it. I've already watched it once. And I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion about this video. Here we go. I do not own the rights to this video. But I will repost it. That way people know that I actually stream. Because there's a gentleman in our stream today who didn't realize I stream. And I've been streaming for nine years. Here we go. One second. If you Before I watch it, let me text the wife and I have to go piss. I should text and piss at the same time. Right back. Okay, right, here, here. Let me see if I can get this. Let me see if I get this picture ready. This would be easy thumbnail. I don't have to worry about doing a whole bunch at home. Okay. Hope I can make that thumbnail. All right, here we go, boys. You asked the UFC this one question. What fighters are on your top five all-time UFC list? This is what you'll hear. John Jones, Anderson Silva, Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor. GSP. But hey, first thing first, this is Dana White's opinion, which is totally fine. Because my top five or four goats or whoever you want to call it is totally different from what his is, right? One name that must never be said. Whenever anybody asks me who's the best fighter in the world, you're the guy. I appreciate it, man. Who the f at all. Whoa! So why not take the opportunity? Shit! My bad. But there's one name that must never be said. Whenever anybody asks me who's the best fighter in the world, you're the guy. I appreciate it, man. Who the f is that guy? Demetrius Johnson. Johnson is his name. You do not speak his name. Mighty Mouse. Demetrius Johnson. Mighty Mouse. He just has very few holes. Kicks like a f tie dude. Mm -hmm. Shoots a double leg like a f good wrestling dude. Grab you right now, the best ever. The best ever, yeah, I agree. He has 13 consecutive title defense. Why didn't you not mention him at all? So why is the UFC trying to erase mm. 13 consecutive title defense? Why didn't you not mention him at all? So why Can you take appreciation for those abs, though? My God. Why am I not a Calvin Klein model or something like that? Or an Avengers? Those guys got to go on steroids and all types of freaking stuff. And here's your boy. Naturally shredded. All right, here we go. Let's go. Why again. is the UFC trying to erase Dimitri? <laughs> UFC 197. Henry Cejudo uh. to win in order to save the flyweight. Funny thing about this UFC 197. This is when I uh, had odds ends with um, Dana White when I said that Ultimate Fighter was stupid, and then I fought. Uh, Henry Cejudo, after I beat Henry Cejudo, I got a new contract. Yeah. Division from its biggest threat, Demetrius Johnson. You've never fought this guy, right? Henry uh, Cejudo. What's the game plan mm. here, man? 
just like anything else, scar their fight. People want to see fights that they're not quite sure what's going to happen, but we all know Demetrius is going to walk through them. That's yeah. how the game plan's been for the last like seven of them. You know, you, you feel that when it's a DJ fight. At the end of the night, we know he's going to get his hand raised. Do you think UFC would be happy <laughs> if you beat Demetrius? Yeah. We've been talking about shutting down the flyweight division for about three years. Oh, really? You hear that? Imagine that. You're on top of the world on your 11 consecutive title defense. 11 consecutive title defense. And the fucking CEO of a company is talking about shutting down your division, right? Let's put, away, let's put away money. Let's put away everything aside. Imagine Russell Wilson was a five-time Super Bowl champion, winning all the Super Bowls, the greatest quarterback in the fucking world, right? But he could never fill seats, right? He could never sell out a stadium, but he was a five-time Super Bowl champion. Do you think the Seattle Seahawks or the Super Bowl, uh, excuse me, the Super Bowl, but the Denver Broncos would think about getting rid of him? Ask your wife that fucking question. Come back and tell me. Yeah. The fights aren't competitive. The media and the public accuse DJ of being bored. I think his dominance has, has shy people away. One of the things I love about Henry Sudo, he always keeps it real. Dominance can't shy people away. I understand that. And if we got to that point, it's because of one man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Connor McGregor. While DJ is the champ, Connor McGregor takes the UFC by storm. I love New York. I own Rio de Janeiro. They want you to give us a quick count to 10, both of you, John. They can only count the five. <laughs> <laughs> when you see a guy like that that's getting so much attention talking <clears throat> shit, does it make uh, you want to start talking shit? No, man. You know, that's his game. When I talk about the Connor McGregor thing, there's the complete fucking opposite of Conor McGregor. Because you're looking for drama. That's, that's what you're looking for, right? The public doesn't expect strictly martial arts anymore. The entertainment and the drama take the front seat. There's a lot of things that maybe he could do in between There's fights Maverick. to help promote himself. Like, I got a wife and kid to worry about. And I'd rather help around the house and have stuff done and do dishes. DJ's by far the most active champion in the UFC. It doesn't matter how good you are. How many headlines can you generate? The media claims he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Right. I think Conor McGregor is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. People just don't know what the f talking about. And they don't appreciate the art of what you're doing. It's not always about our performances. It's about how many people you can put in the seat. So what's wrong with DJ? So one, he's small. Historically, the bigger guys have always attracted the crowds more than the smaller ones. It could be my personality. I've never, you know, belittled my opponents. I'm always showing respect. DJ is even branded as a nerd because he Nerd power, shit, well damn. He likes to play video games. What's wrong with being a nerd? Like, I'd rather be at home playing a game, clock tag, going out to a bar, drinking beer, driving home, getting a DUI, crashing, and coming home beating okay. my life. Okay, okay. Now, let, let, let's, let's, let's get something straight, okay? John Jones and Conor McGregor aren't the only two people in the fucking world who go and get in trouble at bars or driving intoxicated, okay? So for them to, like, pinpoint these two athletes that just because we're in the same field is not fair right when i say that i never intended that to be those two gentlemen because what those two gentlemen have done in the sport of mixed martial arts have been amazing right because each time john jones fights or conor mcgregor fights it's an opportunity for them to bring new eyeballs to mixed martial arts and two opportunity for guys who are on their up up and coming to make a living. So there's me, John Jones, and Conor McGregor are like fucking zero 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 point zero 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 one percent of the world of the everyday assholes who go out there and punch people in the bars and get in trouble with DUI. So when I said this comment, this was not directed towards John Jones or Conor McGregor because I think those guys are doing what fucking 85.6,000% of the men in the world who don't do, which is pay their fucking taxes, take care of their, their children, and pay their taxes. The nerd that's actually playing video games. And you can think, well, DJ... One second. 
I know exactly who the fuck I this I was. Nerd. I know exactly who the fuck that was. You threw me up like that. I want my rematch, asshole. So you playing video games here. And you can think, well, DJ can make an effort to be controversial and dramatic once in a while. But when it comes to him, it goes much deeper than that. You've never had a relationship with your father? Yep. Has he ever reached out to you? Nope. Never seen a picture. Never seen nothing. He's raised by... Just so you guys know, I've reached out to my father. I've known him for five years now. And he's one of the most incredible men I've ever known in my life. A single mom who struggles to find stability. Married multiple... Yes, my mom is deaf. She was married and divorced for uh, four times. Times to a different military man, so there's not that stable life. And I had an abusive stepfather who was, you know, military based. He would come out there and put us in the corner, put our hands up, military style, and just we would just stay there for hours and hours, just getting whipped. And DJ grows up completely unaware that his mother is deaf. Yeah, that's true. I didn't find out my mom was de uh, deaf until my sister came came home. Give me a visit. It takes a real skill to focus on just reading lips and not letting anybody else around her know that she was deaf. DJ copes with everything that's going on by playing video games and watching Pride FC on TV, a Japanese mixed martial arts promotion. I did my own thing, but my friends were doing drugs, oxycodone, weed, and all that stuff, and partying. That is true. When I was in high school, I spent most of my time wrestling, doing track, and cross country. While some of my friends did a lot of drugs. The biggest scene back in the day was oxycodone. It was, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What are the pills they prescribe you? Percocets, oxycodone, um, opioids. That was the biggest scene back in, um, where I grew up in Washington and, um, opioids. Opioids was a big crisis. And that was back in what, 2001, 2002? And now they're fucking saying 2022. Oh, opioids is a big thing. No, we didn't have, they didn't have Xanax back in the day. Zombie stop. Thanks for subscribing to the channel with that Twitch Prime. You've been here for a while. I'm glad you like what you see. I was still the guy doing school, working, dating my, my mm. future wife. Look how high she is. And training my smart hearts by myself. We were hustlers. That's what we were doing. We were working grinding. Three, two, three jobs. Hey, so when I, when it says, when I said that, like I was hustling by myself, what that means is that when you go through high school, after you're done in high school, you kind of like you're still hanging out with your high school buddies, which I was. But when I took the step to do mixed martial arts, it was me and another gentleman, nobody else, right? So with that being said, the other gentleman who was doing mixed martial arts with me, he dropped out. So it was just me. So all the people I know to this day, I did not know in high school. It was basically me going to the gym saying, "Hey, what's up? My name is Timmy Johnson," and then um. I love martial arts. I, I, I love John Claude Van Damme. That's where it kind of came from. I remember when we were pregnant with our first son. He goes, I'm nervous because I don't know what a father does. Being a good father who's present, leading by example, providing financial stability to his family. Those are all things that DJ grew up without. Me and my wife were trying to break the cycle of no divorce, be there for our kids our whole life. I don't want my children to suffer the same thing. He doesn't want to go back working three, four jobs, not be able to put food on the table. At the end of the day, it's about being able to take care of your family, pay your bills. You know, those are things that I think some people... Take I told a gentleman who fought at one uh, on Amazon Prime 1 who lost to Papaya. He was in it back and he was very emotional. I said, Doc, and I said, Doc, I said, at the end of the day, it don't matter if you win, you lose. At the end of the day, it's about paying your bills because five to 10 years from now, nobody, there's going to be some people who are going to remember your fights, but Comcast is always going to call you every 30 days to ask, did you pay your bills? And what I'm getting at is that a lot of people get wrapped up in the society of always winning and making all, well, obviously making money, but winning and trying to be you know, X, Y, and Z. For me, it's always about making the money and paying your bills. If all the other stuff happens along the way, good stuff. But for me, what Destiny said, it's about taking care of your family and making the money and paying your bills. That's what it's always been said. A lot of fighters don't want to talk about that because they feel it kind of like, I don't know what the word is, but I feel like it's like a taboo. But for me, it's like, I don't, that's like my biggest motivation right there take for granted and for us it's very very serious so here we are the fight against henry cejudo 
despite all the adversity that DJ's been through to become the champion, the public wants DJ. So if you guys didn't, you guys aren't keeping up, he basically, you know, talked a little bit, went forward and went all the way back to the beginning and came back to where we're at now. To lose because he's not entertaining. Let that thought sink in for a second. This is what our culture values. That's it. That's it. That's the best pound for pound fighter ever. And the tension between the UFC and DJ starts ramping up even more. I'm not thrilled with Demetrius Johnson. He has the lowest selling pay-per-view. Imagine that! <laughs> in the history of the UFC. In a desperate attempt to save the flyweight division, the UFC tries to force DJ to accept the fight against TJ Dillashaw. Maybe the best UFC bantamweight of all time. Did they threaten to just abolish the division if you didn't take this fight? Yeah. There was never a threat to him. Oh, we're gonna get rid of the division. That was complete bull. But Dillashaw fights at 135 pounds. DJ is at 125. You flat out deny the fight. And I don't understand it. I would like to know why. Demetrius is worried that the UFC will pressure him into fighting TJ, even if TJ doesn't make the weight. Is Demetrius Johnson ducking you? I, I do believe so. You know? See, you know what the beautiful thing about keeping it fucking real is? Is that nobody never knows if you're... Nobody... You, you don't throw any bullshit. Okay? Let me give you guys a straight, honest opinion about this, okay? Before I do that. Ducks Canada, thank you so much for coming to the channel with three months in a row, Twitch Prime. Okay. So, here it is. So they did offer me the TJ fight. They said, absolutely. You pay me a million dollars. Dana says, no. I said, okay. We go on forward. I fight Kyojo Horiguchi. I beat Kyojo Horiguchi. Right? They circle back with this whole thing again. I said, perfect. Matt, Matt Hume, which is my main coach. Right? Uh oh, all right, guys. He, can, he came through and said, okay, this is what we're going to have in their contract. If... TJ Dillashaw, TJ Jeff Dillashaw does not make 125 pounds. Okay. If he does not make 125 pounds, we fight for his belt. Okay. They said no. That's what they said. They said no. Then they went on and said, if you don't take this fight, we're going to close the division. I said, go ahead and close the motherfucking division. TJ, on the other hand, he was gassing up following a narrative, trying to get this fight. And with him doing that, I was like, okay. Then when I saw TJ many years down the road in Disneyland after he popped for EPO, I walked to him like a fucking man and said, dude, I said, one, how are you? I saw him and his wife and I don't believe they have their son there yet. I said, hey man, what's up? Hello, and what's up? You know, we started chopping up and I said, dude, why'd you say all those mean things about me? You can ask him that. I said, why'd you say all these mean things about me? I said, I've always shown you nothing but respect. He says, oh, man, I was just trying to get a fight. I was just trying to, you know, push this narrative and get this fight. I said, well, that's unfortunate. And then I asked him about his EPO. And he came clean about that. He said, you know what? I, I was just trying to make 125. I really wanted to do something different. And I was willing to go to any links to make it. And he also said his body was crashing. And that's when he started taking EPO. Okay. I don't fucking lie. There's no point in lying. I keep it real. I keep it straight 100. So. Always again, nothing but love for TJ Dosha. But I did, I don't want to say confronted, but I asked him and I was like, dude, why were you, you know, trying to do it? At the end of the day, it was about trying to get money. There was a point in time when me and Cody Garbrandt were talking about fighting each other and try to sell it as big as we possibly can to make as much money as possible. But we didn't have the leverage as athletes to make as much pay per view points as we wanted to. I don't think he or me had pay per view points in our contract. So, with that being said, with that being said, that is the truth about this whole escapade of like me versus Tio Dosha is that the athletes, I mean, even though we don't, you know, at this time in my career, I was always willing to play ball with some of the athletes. One was Tio Dosha after I never wanted to play ball with Tio Dosha. What I mean by that is that when me and Cody had the opportunity, when he became world champion and I was world champion, this is before he fought Tio Dosha in New York, Madison Square Garden, me and him talked. And his cousin, uh, his uncle, his boxing coach, were talking about like, dude, if you win this fight against TJ, I mean, you should try to sell it. Like, let's try to like create some beef and make it happen, so we can both get fucking paid millions of dollars. But unfortunately, TJ Dosha came through and blew the bricks off him, which happens. Described to tier one for six months in advance. 
Jesus Christ, is that even a new thing? Appreciate that. Okay, let's move forward. Shaw calling me every day. Do I got the fight? Do I got the fight? He's got that target on his back, like you said, and I'm chasing him down. And, and while DJ continues to dominate the division, Cejudo becomes obsessed with beating him. Ah! I still believe I could beat him. I understand <laughs> he's rejected more. And this time, the UFC what? gets Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. I still believe I could beat him. I understand it. How the fuck does he hear anything that that guy's telling him to do it? Think about that. This man's got fucking beat solos on. I don't know if he's listening to anything or what, but this man is basically he can he can read lips like my mom. God bless you, Henry. I love Henry, but keep that in mind. He's got fucking headphones on and he understands everything Captain America is saying. Shout out to Hobo Chase for gifting five gifts of subs to the channel. Appreciate that. Some good value beats. All right, get back to it. And this time the UFC gets the outcome. They always want. Henry Cejudo, you just shocked the world. In a controversial split decision, DJ loses the belt. Cejudo goes on to become the king of cringe, a character he <laughs> creates to avoid DJ's fate. Now, Cejudo's mm. story deserves to be told in a separate documentary, which I'll do in the future. So of course you sure will. Subscribe if you want to watch it. Of course you do that. I don't think there's for me to prove here in North America. I've done it all. So why not take the opportunity to get out of my contract? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go travel the world and compete somewhere else. He demands to be released from his contract with the UFC. To be considered the best to ever do it or you got to compete all around the world. News broke. Ben Askren to be traded to the UFC. Good old funky. In exchange for Demetrius Johnson. They take Mighty Mouse and we get Ben Askren. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we're going to Singapore. What a beautiful country. Beautiful country. Look at that. Look at that, boys. Cheer! Singapore is a sovereign island country in Southeast Asia. So tiny, you can drive across the island in just an hour. Because of its advantageous location yep. in the middle of a trade route between Europe and Asia, it's always been an international trading hub with a really strong economy. We're one mm -hmm. of the highest average incomes in the world, ahead of countries like Germany, I love Singapore, France, boys. And Japan. Love it. Singapore Beautiful also country. Singapore the biggest fighting promotion in Asia. One championship. They are literally the equivalent to the UFC in Asia. Okay. They're a huge... What I was going to say about the whole thing about you wish that one championship had the same type of US-based, like, promotion, uh, promotional reach or, like, advertisement. So, here's the thing. Asia is so massive that when there's fights and advertisement going on over in Asia, you guys don't know about it. Right. So w what I'm getting at is that imagine this. We always talk about, for example, NVIDIA, which is a, a public traded company, which is basically what powers this GPU or this computer. It's a GPU in it, right? NVIDIA just got shut down to make any transactions with Asia. The government just shut it down. The stock dropped 14 to $15. Okay. Keep that in mind. $15 in one day because the government just cut off ties with Asia. So think about that. That's just a part of the world, Asia, which is very massive. So imagine how many people and in, 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 in countries are in Asia. I believe Asia is a country and country. I don't know if it involves in a don't 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 quote me on that. I'm not a geography uh, specialist, but just imagine that. So you have India, you have Thailand, you have uh, Singapore, you have Manila. You have so many countries over there, so many people in just China alone, right? The advertisement, how big it is over there is very minuscule, what it is over here in America. That makes sense? So what I'm getting at is that it's mass over in Asia and like there's stuff like I was outside picking up dog poop and my neighbor was walking by. We've, we talk, but he kind of knows what I does, but he doesn't, he kind of knows what I do, but he doesn't know what I do for full. With that being said, he goes, dude, like, congrats on your fight. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. I didn't know you watch. He goes, no, I don't. I don't watch you fight. But my wife's parents, they live in Taiwan. And your, your face is plastered all over the place in Taiwan on the cabs, on billboards. So it's a different world over there that you guys aren't getting exposed to with the advertisement that we have here in America. Just keep that in mind. 
huge organization overseas. They have real high-level fighters. The company was founded in 2011 and is different from the UFC in many ways. We're talking about different rule set, a different approach to weight cutting, and also different divisions with a mix of MMA, Muay Thai, and kickboxing belts. So then you, you have a whole new area and territory. I don't know, I feel like there's so many endless opportunities over there. And little does DJ know, there's a bunch of- The one thing I do love about one better than uh, when I found in America was that it was dope to fight over, I'm still fighting over there, is that everybody's super chill. It's like college friends. That's what it feels like to me. The killer's waiting for me. Do y'all want to get in my two? That's me to Wada. He's got nice hair. That fight against Touch Me to Wada, I was on antibiotics. I was fighting SIBO. I was so small and shredded. It was incredible. Aquino! Look at those Uggs, though. Wins and losses happen in mixed martial arts. But at the end of the day, I hope you can be focused on taking care of what matters most. Yep. Which is your family. DJ wants to get back to his feet as quick as possible. And one championship throws another savage at him. Rob Tang is a Muay Thai prodigy. He accumulated over 250 wins before he turned 21. You cannot sit there and trade shots with Rob Tang Jim Wong. He's also the champion of the Muay Thai flyweight division. One championship organizes a special rules super fight between Rob Tang and DJ. Rounds one and three are Muay Thai. Rounds two and four are MMA. So mm -hmm. all DJ has to do is survive the first round. Here we go! Come on. Come on, what you got, Rob Tang? Come on. Oh, shit. After he beats Rod Tang, one championship sets up the rematch against Adriano Moraes. And as DJ is getting ready to face Moraes, guess who decides to help him? He doesn't decide to help help me. I decided to go and train with him. Because I, I have nothing but respect for Hirosito. He, he's done something I've done in the sport of mixed martial arts, which is, you know, uh, two-time divisional champion. And, you know, he's a cool guy. He, he, even with all the, you know, fucking cringe stuff. I, I funky cringe stuff. He's, he's a cool-ass cat. I'll fucks with him. I think this guy did a real good job of kind of showing you guys basically like what like my life consists of. I was just training, family, training, family, gaming, training, family, game. Are you the best player in the world? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Not quite there yet? Not quite there yet. I, I still got a lot of stuff to do. Yep. So give this guy a follow. Um, his name is... What's his name? Patrick Gavia. Give him a follow. Um, if you guys haven't seen this video, here it is in the link. Give it a follow. And yeah, man, that was a good story. You know, sometimes you forget like how long you've been doing, how long I've been doing this and how long I've been in this career of doing mixed martial arts. So give him a follow. Um, 229 viewers. Can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? 229 viewers. If I would have got the bricks blown off me in that fight against Adriano, 
I think I also have the beautiful 54 people that I truly love in this chat. So, just gonna drop a host too. Oh shit! Before we do that, um, we're gonna show. Um, uh, this is the thing that DK Sparta did for me. Boom! Oh, what you guys think about this picture? I'm gonna be using this for my thumbnail for my Psycho Frontier. So, thank you. To shout, shout out to DK Sparta for doing this commission for me of Psycho Frontier because we're gonna be doing a lot, a lot of Psycho Frontier gaming big content for him. So I need to make sure I have a PNG to make my thumbnail. So thank you, DK Sparta. All right, let's switch up a host to, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, let me drop a host to. Damn. Do it to lead. You know, what did the she snap? She's a mother. She's had a baby. We gotta, we gotta help pay for them diapers, baby boys. Hmm. Gigi Zephyrstorm, Gigi Hobo Chase, Gigi to everybody. Anyway. Interesting. Appreciate you guys so much. We'll get this uh reaction to the reaction to the Dana White thing on YouTube ASAP. So.